Good morning. My name is Deborah Dresser. I'm an Episcopal priest uh, who is retired, living in Newburgh. I've been with you at Zion, oh, any number of times, and it's always my pleasure to come back, particularly today, so that your priest and wonderful rector, Deborah Mag, can go away and have a little rest. All the priests of the diocese have given extraordinary time and emotional energy to this pandemic time. They miss you all very much, uh, and yet the church continues to move on and to be robust. Part of the robustness is when we have a baptism, and last Sunday, Benjamin Russell Gerhardt was initiated into the body of Christ through water and the Holy Spirit last Sunday. And this Sunday, you get to witness that baptism, and that will happen right after my sermon. You will see me disappear, and uh, you will see the baptism and participate in that as you can and choose to, and then I magically come back again. So we are going to begin this morning's time of worship by singing hymn number... 482, Lord of all hopefulness, and we will be singing the first two verses. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, Whose trust ever childlike, who cares can destroy, be there at awaking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lathe, be there at our labors and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the Let us continue. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things for which our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us hear the first reading from Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went to Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the, of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set upon the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread broad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, 
Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid, and he said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read the Psalm 139 responsively at the asterisk. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. And are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips. But you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me, behind and before. And lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are also there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold fast me. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me to turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me. And lead me in the way that is everlasting. Our second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from, the, from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves. We have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now to introduce the gospel, we will sing, O Christ the Word Incarnate. Thank mm -hmm. you. Oh. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. And while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the house householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let, them. let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. And just as the weeds are collected and burned up with the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. And the Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun of the kingdom of their father. Let anyone who has ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, today, on this wonderful Sunday morning, we have an, a, a, a rich array of readings from Scripture that affirm God's covenant of love. That despite all our foibles and our missteps, God remains constant with us, affirming us and loving us into loving relations, relationships that bear fruit. And to put the icing on the scriptural cake today, we will celebrate the baptism of Benjamin Russell, who has been brought into the covenant of love, into the living body of Christ through water and the spirit. So let us begin with the profound story from the book of Genesis, a chapter in the ongoing saga of Jacob, that you've been reflecting upon in sermons with Mother Meg. Now in this episode, Jacob has come to a stopping point in a very difficult and disagreeable period of his life. He has tricked his father into giving his fatherly blessing that rightly belonged to his brother, his elder brother Esau, giving it to Jacob instead. This trick has all sorts of scriptural and material consequences. One for sure is that Esau is hot to kill his brother Jacob. Jacob, in the shadows of the night, has quite literally beat it out of town. And now he's traveling north to seek his fortune. And if we follow the story, we find Jacob entering into more intrigue in his life. But at this moment, at this very moment, Jacob has come to the end of a harrowing day and he lies down and he dreams. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. The old spiritual celebrates this particular moment in Jacob's journey. It is in the dream that the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob's father, Isaac, affirms that Jacob, despite all his really bad decisions and tribulations, some of which are the fault of others and many born out of his own grievous thoughts and actions. Despite all of that, God is blessing Jacob. You might have thought that God would have kicked him out, smashed him with the reality of this young man's sin. But no, this is what God says. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. Now Jacob wakes up from the dream I imagine he was raised up, his life unbelievably resurrected from this dream. 
and hearing the words of promise from no less a presence from a God, he looks around and says, surely the Lord must have been in this place, and I didn't even know it. This short vignette says so much to us in the times in which we're living now. Like Jacob trying to map out where and how to go next, how to do the right thing, how to do the loving thing, maybe just how to survive. In this time when so much has gone terribly wrong, some of which is caused by circumstances beyond our control, like the COVID virus. Others the result of willful acts of self-interest, if not brutality, the revelation of deep racism in our society, just to put a name on it. In the midst of all of this mess, we wonder, is God in this place? Is the Lord God speaking to us and calling us into the possibility of living into that unearned, undeserved covenant of love that is offered to us? That God is blessing us when we are feeling war worn torn is God in this place where we're living now? Jacob's story, to me, affirms this. And the words that Paul writes to the church in Rome affirms a mighty yes. For Paul writes, the very spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, joint heirs with Christ. And however much we may suffer with him, we may also be glorified with him. Yes, there is suffering. Yes, it feels as if the whole creation is groaning. But God is in this place. God in Christ Jesus is in this place. Yes. So here's another story, not from the Holy Scriptures, but we might say the Scriptures of the streets. And to be specific, 242nd Street and Broadway in the Bronx. There on the corner is a solitary refrigerator painted in bright yellows, purples, orange, and blue. The fridge stands on the sidewalk with a free food written on its front and on the, on the side, the same in Spanish, comida gratis. I read about the free food refrigerators in the newspaper, and I have to admit I was surprised with joy and, yes, amazement at this story. For a refrigerator filled with free food affirmed the promise of God's constant love, stretching out to touch the hearts and the hands of God's people. As Selma Rabin disinfects the unit which is plugged into a socket into a restaurant, she talks about the people who regularly come to this particular fridge and others like it all across the city. Mothers, home attendants, nursing assistants, the unemployed stop by the fridge to pick up food. She doesn't ask prodding questions of those who visit the frigid, frigid air. Now, when the coronavirus pandemic and the stay-at-home orders halted New York City's ec economy, many residents some suddenly out of work, others sick with illness, struggle to fill their own refrigerators. The Bronx, where Ms. Ravin lives, suffered the city's highest rates of virus cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. Community re refrigerators, sometimes nicknamed friendly fridges, have been popping up on city sidewalks since March. Everyone is welcome to take whatever they need, leave behind food that they don't need, extra produce, and the many volunteers who clean and stock the refrigerators daily ask local restaurants and stores to donate unused and unsold food items instead of throwing them away. At first, some residents were skeptical. Well, I think I was too. Even cab drivers stopped at the sidewalk and told her, you know, this is not going to work. People will take advantage of the free food. People will cheat and people will steal. But that apparently has not been the case. We don't know everybody's story, Ms. Rabin said. We're really trusting them. Like Jacob, this is a story of hope in times of trouble. For to me, and I think to you, it affirms that God is in this place. 
Now, last week, as I mentioned earlier, Benjamin entered into a covenant of love between God in Christ and himself. And the whole Christian fellowship, past and present and yet to come. This mystical bonding that traverses time and limitations of space through baptism calls us into God's dream of what our life is and can be. And today, you will be witnesses of this baptism. Benjamin's new life in the spirit recognizes that even as God in Christ will everlastingly be bonded to him, he will, as we have and probably will again, experience many ways in which we'll get lost in our self-centeredness and fall into sin. But it doesn't need to end there. For the grace of baptism is the gift of return, of returning to the Lord, the gift of reconciliation and redemption. So too is the shape of our living, to seek and to serve Christ and all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself at whatever time and in whatever place, even on the sidewalks of a hungry city by an orange and blue refrigerator. Surely. God is in all of these places, affirming you that you are always in his love. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen.
They live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, he led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those here who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of uh, Christ our Savior. To him and to you and to the Holy Spirit, we all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. Benjamin Russell. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good job, good job. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon your servant the forgiveness of sin, and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Also with you. Now I've been given some announcements to make. Actually, you've been sent a lot of different announcements, but I wanted to highlight just uh, two of them, if I might. One is that um, the food pantry is asking again for soup. Uh, July is soup month, so your donations can be left, as you probably know, in boxes on the rectory front porch. Your support is always appreciated by people who are food insecure. Also, um, 
want you to note that, uh, here we go. I'm going to find it any minute. Here we are. The Friends of Darbonne of the Readathon kickoff is happening. Um, please read about that in uh, the, the announcements that were sent out to you. Uh, it sounds like a, a fantastic fundraiser um, to help young people get scholarships into schools in Haiti. And I think that's all I'm going to uh, highlight in terms of the, the announcements. We do hope that Mother Mag is having a fantastic time off, and uh, we pray in great thanksgiving for Benjamin's new life in Christ. Now let us turn to uh, our hymn this morning uh, be, as we get ready for the Eucharist, uh, Blessed Are the Pure in Heart. It's in our hymnal on 656. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna Amen. in the highest. Give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you've delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you've brought us out of error into truth, out of sin, into righteousness, out of death, into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember his, his death, death we, proclaim we proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection, we, we await, await his coming, coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, 
that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Father has, ta has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily, daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Oh, we have a hymn. We're going to sing a hymn. Yes. We know that Christ is raised, 296. Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We promise to share, share the, love the love of Christ, of Christ with, with all of God's, God's children, children in our, in our worship, worship, word, words, and, and witness. witness. Now let us sing in celebration in the cross of Christ I glory, hymn number 441. Thanks be to God.